This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. We've talked a lot on this channel about the intersections of surveillance technologies and artificial intelligence, and how these technologies can be used to both improve our lives and also worsen societal inequalities. The obvious example of this is facial recognition, which has been touted as a method to catch criminals and solve cold cases, but has also been shown to be inaccurate on the faces of people of color, and may result in innocent people being wrongfully charged with crimes. However, there are other biometric features that we can use to identify people, and today we're going to talk about one that has flown under the radar for far too long. One that you never expected might be targeted, but might be the biggest threat to our personal privacy yet. That's right, we're talking about butt recognition. Specifically, your anal print. <laughs> Can I do this video in one take? Probably not. In all seriousness, this is far from the greatest threat to your individual privacy, but it is kind of wild. This week, we're talking about a paper that was published earlier this week in Nature Biomedical Engineering that focuses on a prototyped smart toilet that's designed to monitor your health by monitoring your bathroom activities. Stanford researchers were interested in collecting more information about our everyday health without having to have people come into the clinic or go through invasive procedures to collect the fluids that we usually use for diagnostics, things like blood, urine, saliva, etc. This actually feels somewhat timely given the current situation. I'm not expecting another pandemic in the near future, but having a method to monitor patients who are chronically ill or immunocompromised without having to have them come into the hospital itself where they might catch an opportunistic disease seems like a great idea right about now. It also gives medical researchers access to more data so that they can develop new therapeutic tools or monitor the efficacy of existing ones. This paper breaks the smart toilet down into three parts. A system that analyzes your urine, a system that analyzes your fecal matter, and a system that identifies the user sitting on the toilet. All of this is done with a combination of pressure sensors, chemical sensors, and cameras. Four cameras, to be exact. Urine flow is analyzed using a high-speed camera that's triggered both by the person sitting down on the toilet as well as sensors that can tell when something is moving in the toilet bowl. And at the same time, you essentially pee on a stick that analyzes the chemical components of your urine to make sure that everything's normal. On the other hand, fecal analysis is primarily performed to determine whether you are constipated, have diarrhea, or are pretty normal. This is accomplished using a neural network trained on a variety of images of different stools that have been labeled by both medical students and the people who produce those stools. And labeling from surgeons is used as the gold standard for accuracy. Finally, user identification is accomplished in two ways. First, a fingerprint scanner is integrated into the flush handle of the toilet so a user can be identified as you flush the toilet. And second, one of the cameras that is in the toilet is programmed to record a short video once the user sits down, going on to compare that video to previously acquired and labeled images of the anuses of everyone else in the household. Now, none of this explains why they needed to develop an algorithm to ID your butt. This system is designed to be used in households with multiple people, so it needs to be able to attribute the data to the person on the toilet. Additionally, this smart toilet is designed to record and save data that would go into electronic health records, which are protected under HIPAA in the United States. In essence, this means that additional security measures have to be put in place to make sure that the data ends up in the correct location attributed to the correct person and does not end up somewhere it's not supposed to be. The authors also point out that if you were to use this on an automatically flushing toilet, there isn't any fingerprint sensor, so you would need some secondary method of identification. They refer to the fingerprint and anal print combination as two-factor authentication, which, if we're being picky, isn't technically correct. They've chosen two instances of the same factor here. Now, you would think that this is the first time that someone had designed an algorithm to identify people by their butts, right? Kind of. The idea of your anus being a unique biometric identifier actually goes back to the mid-1900s. The authors cite Spanish painter Salvador Dali as having figured out that the anus has 35 or 37 creases that are unique to the person based on genetics. Identical twins apparently have the same crease pattern. However, this was the first time that I could find of someone using an algorithm to perform that identification. So, is the future full of AI toilets? Should we be switching to wearing diapers for privacy's sake? Well, maybe. 
Given that the system is designed to be used under HIPAA, in theory, your personal data should be protected. In practice, HIPAA is currently desperately in need of an update that reflects modern technology and algorithmic advances that make it possible to re-identify people based on their data alone. However, if this system were sold by a private company directly to a consumer, then that protection under HIPAA no longer applies. At that point, it's up to the companies to determine how they will store and use our data. Presumably there would be some sort of clause for this in the terms of service that no one would read that would allow companies to keep and use our data for... I, I honestly have no idea. I don't know what you'd want to do with this. And it seems like some people might be down to use this system. At the end of the paper, the authors discuss the results of a user acceptance study which aimed to see how comfortable people were using this smart toilet. They lead with the fact that the study population is almost definitely biased. Stanford students likely don't reflect the opinions of the general population. However, more than half the users were at least somewhat comfortable with it, and the biggest cited concern was data privacy and protection. Unsurprisingly, people also weren't a huge fan of the anal print part. I wonder why. Personally, the two big things that stuck out to me were the idea of an anal print as a unique identifier and the data privacy. And this is a proof of concept study, so I don't actually expect the authors to have gone this far in their initial work. First, the idea of the anal print as a unique identifier that can be recognized by an algorithm probably needs to be tested on a larger group of people. While I believe that it is unique, I would imagine that among many other factors, the image processing method and camera resolution would factor in pretty heavily as to whether or not you could successfully identify people out of the general population. They do partially address these concerns by installing LED lights into the toilet to ensure consistent lighting. Second, I can only imagine how many people would be trying to hack into smart toilets if this were the case. So a more rigorous data privacy analysis would probably be worthwhile. However, that level of protection isn't actually required under HIPAA, so I get why they didn't do it. In short, policy proposals that discuss facial recognition and biometric identification broadly will probably have to cite this paper somewhere just to say that this does exist, but in general, I think our butts are safe. And as weird as it is, the system could really help people who are immunocompromised or have chronic health conditions so that they don't have to come to the hospital and possibly expose themselves to diseases that might make them sicker than they already are. And if you want to check out more unusual videos like this one, you should check out CuriosityStream. CuriosityStream is a subscription streaming service with thousands of documentaries and nonfiction videos. Want to learn more about quantum physics? Got you covered. Interested in innovation? They have that too. And since many of us need something to watch while social distancing, CuriosityStream is offering a 40% off stay-at-home deal, so you can get all of this for only $14 a year at curiositystream.com slash Jordan. With your CuriosityStream subscription, you'll also get access to ad-free videos from your favorite creators on Nebula, a streaming video platform built by and for independent creators like me. While CuriosityStream is all about big budget nonfiction videos, we're building Nebula because we want a place for education creators to try out new content ideas that might not work on YouTube. Like videos about how scientists are using AI to identify you by your butt. CuriosityStream loves independent creators and wants to help us grow our platform, so they're giving my viewers free access to Nebula when you sign up at the link in the description box. As always, if you like this video, you can let me know by smashing that like button and subscribing to my channel. You can also support me on Patreon. Thank you so much to all of my patrons. Otherwise, you can follow my work from home PhD life on the social medias, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.